This is one of the most popular gaming monitors on Amazon at the moment. And in today's episode of Cheap vs Expensive, I'm gonna compare it to something a lot fancier to see how much more you're getting for your significantly increased investment. Now for the budget end of our comparison, I bought a Kuroi 24E6C, which as the name suggests, is a 24 inch display that's 1080p and has a 165 hertz refresh rate. And you get all that for 120 US dollars, depending on when you buy it. That is a lot of numbers for the price. Although I have tested one of these on the channel before and there is a pretty big catch, which we'll talk about later in the video. Either way, just going by the numbers, I'm not surprised this thing's as wildly popular as it is. Whereas on the trust fund end, we're looking at a Corsair Xenion monitor, which costs almost 10 times as much at a thousand US dollars. But for that eye-watering price increase, you are getting a 27-inch 1440p OLED display. And if you've watched some of my videos, you'll know that I love OLED more than any of my imaginary children. So with that, let's see how the two stack up. Now the first point of comparison is ergonomics, and this is a place where I think it's often worth paying more money, because the stands make a big difference. The stand on the Kuroi monitor, for example, is me, whereas the stand on the Corsair display is Brad Pitt in Thelma and Louise. Granted, if Brad Pitt had a touch of osteoporosis in Thelma and Louise, because if at its max setting you hit the desk, you can see it, it does kind of creep down a bit. This only happens at the max setting, but it, it does feel a little bit like it doesn't want to stay there, which is unacceptable at this price point. But still, even at its lower point, you can see the monitor sits way higher than this monitor. Now, this is something I mention every time I talk about a monitor, but peering down at low displays like this is the reason why in the entire Western civilization, we don't have a functional spine between the lot of us. Now, granted, you don't have to pay huge amounts of money for a monitor to get a functional stand. You can just put this one on a box, which helps a lot. And it does have a VESA mount, so you can put it on an arm, which will cost about the same as the monitor does. So yeah, there is that bit. Now there are a bunch of budget monitors that have way better stands on them than this Kuroi display does. However, the higher end you go, the taller and sturdier they tend to get. Now aside from just the additional height adjustment, you do also get portrait mode on this display. And yeah, the, the stand is just way more flexible. It's way better, it looks better. This is a big difference. Now, while we're here, we may as well talk about build quality quickly, which again is a big difference between the two, as you'd hope, considering the price difference. There is some metal on the Corsair monitor. A lot of the parts you kind of interact with are metal. You've got a bunch of plastic on it as well, but the plastic is way higher quality than the plastic on the Kuroi display. And build quality wise, there is that issue of it not quite wanting to stay fully erect. That's a bit of a problem. But when looking at the Kuroi display, yes, it is very plastic. Ow. But for its price, it's kind of fine, and a monitor isn't really a thing you like manhandle the whole time, so I don't know how much that really matters. When it comes to inputs, they both have two HDMI ports and a display port, but the Corsair monitor earns its premium with a USB-C in and a USB hub on the back, which is pretty useful, although on the back means it's not super accessible, but you can never have too much USB. Unfortunately, both of them have external power bricks, which I hate, just make the monitor a bit thicker and let me plug a power cable straight into it. Although the Corsair implementation is slightly better because you can plug a power cable into the power brick, whereas the power brick on the Kuroi monitor is a real short boy. One of the big things you pay for as you climb up the monitor ladder is resolution. But I don't think resolution is super useful in determining how sharp the display is going to be. I think pixel density is a lot more useful because you can have a 4K display, but if it's like 82 inch across, you're not going to be able to sit near to it because it's going to look terrible. And because that Kuroi display is 24 inch, the 1080p-ness of it isn't that big a deal. It still looks pretty sharp with its 91 pixels per inch. Although for our huge additional outlay, because our OLED display is OLED, it's, it's just 1440p. But 1440p at 27 inch gives us a pretty good pixel density of about 110 pixels per inch. This monitor looks nice and sharp. 
Now, the general rule of thumb I follow when it comes to minimum resolution for a given display size is if I have a system that can just handle gaming at 1080p, I wouldn't get bigger than 24 or maybe a 25 inch display. With 1440p, the max display size I'd get is 27 inch. And when it comes to 32 inch, I think 4K is a good minimum resolution there because 1440p 32 inch displays just look a bit too blurry for my opinion. Again, this is personal preference. So go and check out these monitors in a shop to see where your pixel density limit is. Now, when it comes to image quality, static images at least, we've got some very good news with the budget monitor. Because of the VA panel, it does measure very well. We get 100% sRGB color space coverage, good color accuracy, and pretty good contrast ratios as well. Things very much fall apart though the moment movement gets involved. If you've watched any of my monitor videos before, you'll know that I really don't like VA because of the smearing problem. Ooh, yeah, okay, now just straight off the bat, scrolling through your Steam library, you can tell the motion rendering isn't great. Regardless of what overdrive mode you use, and despite the high refresh rate, gaming is just one headache-inducing motion artifact. Which might not bother you, but for me, even if the display measured as perfectly as Zeus's left areola, it would still make the display unusable for me. Oh, what a poopy display. Just have a look at this poorly carried out UFO test as an illustration of how badly it smears. A problem the OLED very much does not have. Look at that difference. There's a lot of strengths to OLED. You can go on about its infinite contrast ratio, amazing image quality, just wild off-axis performance. But the thing that really sells me on this display technology is a combination of its just immaculate motion rendering and wildly good input lag. They're so good for gaming. They feel so snappy and natural to game with. Now there are some downsides. It's not a particularly bright monitor. I feel like for indoor use, it's bright enough, but it doesn't sear your retina in the way that like mini LED can. And in very dark games like Escape from Tarkov, the really deep black levels can become a bit of a problem and you can't really see what's going on in tunnels and stuff. OLED does have the potential issue of burn-in, although, I personally have not had much of an issue with burn-in, despite having a lot of experience with OLED displays, so I don't think it's that big a problem, but your, your experience may vary. Now when it comes to the measurements of this display, I had some problems, some weird stuff was going on, I don't know why, but every time I started the display analysis cycle on my Spider X, it just broke the colors on the display. It measured weirdly terribly, like really, really badly. But when the software is closed, all the colors kind of fix and it looks very good. So I, I'm not sure what's going on there. And I haven't had an OLED display before that didn't measure remarkably well, but there does seem to be an issue with this specific Corsair sample I have here. Something that I haven't seen other people really complain about in terms of like reviews online and stuff. Now, obviously, there is middle ground between these two displays. You don't have to go from the $110 VA smear fest straight to OLED. There are very, very good IPS gaming displays in the middle. An IPS is very good, but it does have its own issues like IPS glow, very low contrast ratios are the two main ones. And because of those issues, you still get a markedly better performance going from even a high-end IPS display to an OLED gaming monitor like this one. And that means that with gaming monitors at the moment, in 2024, the high-end does really justify itself because there aren't really any budget OLED gaming monitors yet and it doesn't seem like it's gonna happen soon, from what I can tell. So to summarize, with gaming monitors, when you spend a lot more money, you get a bigger, higher refresh rate, higher resolution display that is OLED so better in almost every way. Who would have seen that coming? And my Corsair sample here even came with a free helping of Elma possession, which makes it a real bargain. Which brings me to the end of the video. Thank you for watching, subscribe to the channel if you liked the video, and until the next one, bye bye.